Welcome to Living Your Greatness. Each episode, we bring on great people to inspire you to achieve your greatness. We discuss topics all related to health and wellness. Listen to world-class stories, learn valuable lessons, and turn knowledge into action. It is now time for you to unlock your inner greatness. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Living Your Greatness. This is your host, Ben Mummy, and today we have another guest that's new to the show, and her name is Jenny Grace. So for those of you who don't know Jenny, she is an American country music artist, songwriter, and military veteran. Jenny is a dynamic vocalist and has been compared to country greats like Faith Hill, Carrie Underwood, and Reba. In 2019, she also saw the release of a catchy hit called Driving with the Top Down, filmed in Hollywood, California. She has been applauded for her soaring vocals and authentic Nashville sound, backed by a band of top New York City musicians. Jenny has received multiple nominations at Independent Music Awards for Rising Female Vocalists, Best Song, and other categories. With her talent, drive, and heart, it is only a matter of time for Jenny to become a household name. Jenny, welcome to the show. It is a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. Awesome. So Jenny, let's kind of get rolling here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you spend your formative years growing up in the United States? And what made you want to become a country music artist? Yeah, so I grew up in a little beach town in Connecticut. And um, I joined the military when I was 18. I always wanted to serve. I used to grow up watching like the FBI shows and the history channel and all that kind of stuff. And I just wanted to serve. I came from a family who served. So I felt like it was only a matter of times until I did, you know? So I went in and while I was deployed, um, I had a guitar shipped out to me because there was some downtime and I learned three chords on the guitar and started playing country songs and People noticed that I had like a twang when I sang, even though I'm from the Northeast, which was kind of weird, but I had that twang. So I decided to choose the the country music genre because I love the writing and I think it's very authentic and it's got a lot of heart in it. Cool. So what is it about music that makes you feel so passionate? So I, I like how when I have an emotion or I'm feeling something, I can just put it down on paper get it into a melody, get it into the lyrics. And I feel like it transcends, you know, it, it, other people, if I perform it can feel the feeling and, you know, it's totally intangible, but it's really powerful. And I think it's healing for people. That's why I I like music because I want to heal people, you know, and I think that's a, it's a beautiful way to do it. Music's definitely a great way for, you know, people to connect, you know, with their feelings, emotions. But what inspired you to start playing and making country music? Because there's one thing, you know, to pick it up, to start doing it as a hobby or downtime. But there's another step when you actually start saying, okay, this is something that I want to do. You know, I want to share this gift, this passion with the world. What do you feel is the best song that you've ever released and why? Sure. So, I, I mean, I grew up singing a little bit. I did like some shows locally, people told me to pursue it. You know, I would sing like Celine Dion, you know, the big songs like that. I can do those songs, but you know, the pop genre at the time really didn't like register with me. You know, there was something about country music, especially from the nineties and now currently country music that it's just, it's become this fusion of rock. You know, all the great songwriters go to Nashville, like all the songwriters that wrote for Lady Gaga for that movie she was in. They were all from Nashville. You know, that's where people go if they want to get good writing is Nashville. I mean, they also go to L.A., but Nashville is like the heart of where all the music is is like written, you know. So I I really learned that and I appreciated that. And that's what made me get to that genre is because that's where all the great writing was, you know, is Nashville and country music. So that's that. And um, I just felt this passion like. I had to do it. My friends were telling me in the military, like, please do this. You're meant to do this. You know, like you're good at your job here, but you need to be singing for the world, you know, because I would make people feel better, I guess. You know, they would feel, you know, like if they missed their wife, like I did a show over in Iraq and the guy was like crying. He's like, you know, this reminds me of my wife. Like, thank you for singing. I sing at last or something. You know, so if, if I'm doing that to people and I'm affecting them, I'm like, well, then maybe I should use this gift. Maybe it's a gift, you know, maybe I should, I'm supposed to do it. Um, you know, and so I think one of the best songs I released is Driving with the Top Down. It's 
it was stuck in my head actually as a melody for like three years. Finally, I put it down to paper and wrote it on the guitar. And I was like, finally, because this is annoying. If you're just hearing something in your head, it's just like, get this out of my head. Like, what is this? And so, you know, it was it was catchy. It's it's gotten some placements. And I think hopefully in the future we'll get more. But it's kind of like a fusion. I mean, I'm sure you heard it. It's it's not just country. It's got like a different kind of feel to it. A little r and I mean, you know, so. Absolutely. No, for sure. Yeah, that's definitely a song uh, that I recommend uh, all our listeners kind of check out. Thanks for kind of sharing, you know, how you made the decision to move forward with making this a career. It was also really interesting to hear about some people in your life within your community, you know, saw your gift and kind of encouraged you to move forward with pursuing that gift. And I think that's awesome, especially because sometimes we get categorized as that one thing, you know, like, if someone's a teacher, you know, people will categorize them as a teacher. If someone is, you know, a businessman, they'll be categorized as a businessman. But really, there's so many aspects of kind of any person, right? So something that I actually admire about you is not only are you passionate about, you know, singing or kind of songwriting, you're also a decorated military veteran. I know you've spent time singing at the Yellow Ribbon events around the world for wounded veterans. And in 2019, you visited the National Veterans Affairs and inspired many with your hopeful song, American Heart. So why is this community? so close to you yeah so going back to like why I did music I tried to get away from it you know when I was a kid people would not even recognize me as anybody but oh that's that great singer oh she's gonna be a famous singer like I didn't want that stigma I didn't want that I was like I want to do something else I want to use my brain like I'm smart too like people can you recognize that but it was always oh yeah she's a good singer that's all people ever like you said like people categorize people and I tried to get away from it so I was like okay I want to serve. Like, I don't want to do music. I don't want to be a star. Like, it's just, it seems so like, you know, vain to me to just kind of pursue my own passion. I'm like, why would I, you know, like who gives me the right? So I wanted to give back. And that's why I did join at 18. I wanted to serve the country. You know, the country gave me a lot. I had a good childhood. I was like, I want to do this. Um, so that's kind of why that happened. And, uh, you know, people would ask me, you know, like, well, you're a veteran, you should do some stuff, you know, for other veterans. And I had two songs that I was inspired to write called American Heart, another song called God and Country. Uh, American Heart is about, you know, kind of like this country, how it was built, what the American heart is, you know, that kind of thing. And God and Country is about serving. It's like kind of a girl's perspective. I don't know if you've heard it. I could you know, show you. But anyway, those are the two songs. And so my PR team said, let's, let's go down to the VA in Nashville. Let's, let's sing these songs, you know, and I did. And and this was incredibly hard for me because, you know, I'm emotional as a songwriter and I would see some of the guys there who literally had like 12 tours and were there for like, not just wounded like they actually had like really bad diseases like could die any day you know and after serving 12 tours and then you're dying of like cancer or something it's just you ask god like why like why didn't i die over there and you know but some of these people like i don't know if you ever met veterans but a lot of them just have like this excellence about them they're very hard workers they don't take things for granted because they've seen death they've seen their friends die right like they've been to terrible places so they have like a different attitude than most people, I think, you know, I mean, I'm not saying they're better than everyone, but I, I don't know if you know what I mean, but there's like something about them that, you know, they have like a heart, a big heart. So there was people like that in the hospital and, you know, I was singing for them, trying not to cry because also I'm, I feel for them as my brothers and sisters in arms, you know, and, but the best part of it was that they were moved by my song and inspired like, Hey, there's another veteran going out and speaking for us. Cause a lot of people don't care. A lot of, a lot of music people do that sometimes cause they want the publicity or whatever. I actually care. Cause I was a veteran. I'm like, I feel for these guys, you know? So it, it's a little different for me. It's, it's one of my passions. And then I did a yellow ribbon event in 2019 in Knoxville. And that was also very moving, you know? So I'd like to do more events. You know, I love how Toby Keith does all the stuff that he does with veterans. Oh my God. He's like the biggest, you know, him and Craig Morgan are great for that. So. 
yeah, it, it's awesome to give back to a community, right? That we were part of. And even if it's a community that we're, we've kind of graduated from, but it was part of our life at one point, we'll always want to be part of that still and find a way to still be part of it and give back. Yeah. So thanks for sharing that. So Jenny, every songwriter has a creative process that they follow when creating music. Can you walk us through your creative process when you write new music? Sure. So usually it starts with a melody or a mood. Um, If it's a melody, like when I wrote the song, Baby Come Home, I was very young, you know, early 20s. And I just had this like feeling. I, I was missing a guy that I was dating who was overseas. He was overseas for like six months. I didn't see him. Another army person. And, uh, you know, I, I had this song as this concept. And so I start like doing this, you know, bluesy melody. And I have like a first few lyrics, baby, come home to me. I hear you on the phone, but it's not the same. And then I use that theme and I'm like, okay, this is the chorus. This is the theme. This is the hook. And then I'll go and I'll develop the song. Usually sometimes I'll ask someone else to help with the rest of the composition. Um, But sometimes it's just me and I write the whole thing alone. But it does help with co-writers, as you know, in Nashville, like getting that second person on it will make the song great. So thanks for sharing us, uh, you know, that whole process. So Jenny, David Malachowski, the former guitarist of Shania Twain, has mentioned you are the best country singer that he has ever played with since Shania. He said you have a huge, soaring, emotive voice and believes it's a question of when, not if, to make it. Why do you think David thinks so highly of Well, I think, you know, it is rare to have, like, someone who's into the, like, really, really singing. Like, I'm really into it. I don't just, like play the guitar and sing along. Like I studied for years on the vocals and I kind of, I kind of studied the different singers that I wanted to be like, and that I emulated and how they did it. And all the big singers like Carrie and stuff. I mean, she watched Martina for years, you know, people really like sat there and like zoned in and figured it out what they wanted to do. And maybe that's something he appreciates about me that I took the art very seriously, you know, cause some people, they don't, they just throw an auto tune and that's like, that's it. But I don't, I never wanted to be like that. You know, I wanted to have good pitch. I wanted to like be good. So my band would like be good and that kind of thing. Um, He also, you know, is also from new, like kind of like new England area. And so, you know, I'm sure he sees the parallel. He, he started later a little bit with the guitar and then got with Shania. So, you know, it, there's not too many people around here that like dream of being big in music. It's not like, you know, but, you know, there's some people that certainly do. I mean, literally, John Mayer is from maybe like half an hour away from me. And that was a long time ago. But, you know, there are some people that do it. So. So, Jenny, who's your favorite country artist you have ever collaborated with and why? So I haven't collaborated with too many people yet. But uh, Danny McMahon and I just did a duet called Lights of Our Hometown. And he's great. He's very easy to work with. He's got a great voice. He's a great songwriter. I kind of compare him to like Keith Urban. Um, I don't know if you heard the song, the duet we had, but because he plays guitar, he writes, you know, he's kind of producing. So to me, he's like a Keith Urban, you know, he's got that thing going on. But um, it was interesting because I met him through Instagram and they wanted to use my vocals for the song. They could have had someone bigger than me, but they picked me. So I was excited. And uh, I recorded everything remotely from Nashville um at Omni Studios and then I sent the tracks over to England and then they mixed it so it's pretty cool that's awesome cool what do you believe separates a good country music artist from a great country music artist from good to great I think um they really have to have like a passion and and something intangible about them to make them different I mean anybody can sit there and play three chords and have a great voice but if there's no feeling it's like You know, I've seen that with some people. I've seen, oh, wow, they're really good. They look good and they're playing guitar, but there's nothing special. You know, like Luke Holmes, like, okay, he doesn't look like a model, but there's something about him that you were just drawn in. I I saw him in Nashville before he blew up in 2018. I saw him perform at like Tin Roof and he, you know, he was just kind of a little bit unknown. And it's like, you just listen and your jaw drops when the guy sings. He's got this rich, boomy voice that just draws you in. The songwriting is amazing. And you're just like, 
okay, who is this? You know, so that's the kind of thing that makes someone great. It's like that intangible um, passion they have that like comes out of them, you know, so. Absolutely. And you can always feel when, when passion's there, right? Mm -hmm. When someone's in it, right? Off of not only their voice, but even, you know, uh, their, their emotions, right? Like seeing, seeing their right. facial expressions and, or, you know, if they're dancing or, or if they're coming out a lot because they want to keep playing because they, they don't want the night to end. Eric Church is pretty famous for that. He'll, he'll come out two, three, four times and just keep playing for the rest of the oh, night. Yeah. He's, he's one of those two, just so passionate for it. So moving to my next question, describe your favorite venue for performing country music and what makes it so special? Sure. So I actually prefer theaters. Um, I don't know. Like, I just feel like it's more intimate and people are listening more. They're sitting down. They're watching the show. The lights are beautiful. The acoustics are beautiful. I mean, I just played... Um, my first theater show two weeks ago at um, a university in New Jersey. And it's very intimate. It's like, you know, you're walking out to the stage, it's dark. You can't be loud on the stage because the audience hears you. It's just a different vibe than going to like some, you know, downtown venue in Nashville where everything's loud. And then people only start listening when you start playing. I mean, this is like pin drop before you get on the stage. So I really prefer the theaters. I think they're cool. Okay, cool. So theater, yeah. theater's the spot right on. You know, speaking of performing, right, at a theater or, or even if it was these festivals, obviously not right now, you know, because of COVID. Has there ever been a time where you have felt performance anxiety? And if so, do you follow a process or a ritual before you perform to get rid of your nerves? Oh, yeah, it's a funny story about that. In July, um, I played a big festival in Pennsylvania. And coming through the tri-state area where I live, you know, New York City, if you're going from where I live, all the way if you have to pass New York City you're going to be behind traffic like four hours like it's just going to go on and on so the show was at like I don't know seven and I was supposed to go on and open the show so literally we got there so late because of the traffic that I had to get out of the car and walk on the stage and there was like a thousand people there and I'm just pulling it together in the car freaking out like just so so the way I got over it is I just started like breathing, like breathing exercises. And then I used the bathroom. I got myself together and then literally walked on the stage. I mean, the thing is you got it. You got to breathe. I always tell people breathe because those kind of situations will happen. I mean, your tour bus could be late, you know, things like this happen all the time. You just have to pull it together because you cannot bring any of that to the stage because the audience watches and sees everything. You have to leave everything off the stage. Absolutely. I think that's good advice. It kind of reminds me of when I used to do a lot of event planning. As an event planner, you know every success and failure, you know, that's going on right behind the scenes. Yeah. But really, when it comes to every event, a lot of your performers, in your case, they don't see all that, right? So all that matters yeah. is, is when you show up, that right. you show up, right? And, and you be yourself. And kind of like you said, you take a, a breath and, and you kind of stay calm. So yeah, no, thanks. Thanks for sharing that. I want to go back. You were speaking about a new song that you launched. It's called Lights of Our Hometown that came out in 2021. What were the lyrics about in this song? Sure. So I didn't write the lyrics, um, but I really identify with them. Uh, Danny McMahon and um, Ryan Sunbar wrote them. And he's actually from British Columbia, that second writer. So that was interesting. Thought you would appreciate the Canadian. Basically, it talks about a guy coming in to his hometown thinking of this girl that he knew and was in love with a long time ago. And we've all had this. We've all experienced this. You know, certainly I feel that if I go back to my hometown, if I'm say I'm in, you know, Nashville for a couple months and I come home and I'm like, wonder where that person is. You know, like, is he is he going to be at the gym? Is he going to like, you know, you have these feelings whenever you come back to the hometown. So it's kind of like this, like magical chorus, like the lights of our hometown and makes you like kind of get visual and think about it. And it's cool. It's, it's, it's like a nostalgic love ballad. So. Awesome. Cool. So Jenny, it is exciting to have goals or kind of future envisions. Right. And, you know, so that being said, what accomplishments do you see yourself achieving in the next five to 10 years? Yeah. So I would love to play the Grand Old Opry. Um, that's a huge 
hopeful thing for me. I hope I can get on there. I went on the WSM radio show, which is the Opry radio, but eventually I want to go on the Grand Old Opry. That'd be amazing. Um, and then I'd like to, you know, attend the CMAs. Um, maybe if my writing's part of it, a song, that'd be great. Get, get it up there for some awards. You know, um, I'd like to do that. Um, I also branch out and do other things like modeling and acting. So, you know, I just recently got some breaks with that. So, you know, I, I'd like to do that kind of thing. And if I get an opportunity, I'd be really grateful. Are there any country artists you are inspired by? What qualities do you admire most about them? Yeah, I'm inspired by a lot of different artists. You know, they're like Luke Combs is amazing. I just love everything about how he launched his career. It was really blood, sweat and tears. You know, nobody helped him. He, he really just got out there and, and did all the hard work and then people helped him eventually. But he was the driving force. He's really inspiring. Priscilla Block is another one. She just came out of Nashville. She's uh, broke all the stereotypes and put songs on TikTok. And, and it's really cool to see people like that who were really great and just, you know, they get launched through these different platforms by themselves only. No one's pushing them. They're, they're sitting playing guitar on TikTok and, you know, that kind of stuff really inspires me that people still have that drive because I've met a lot of people that want to do it, but they don't put in that drive. I mean, you can't, no one's going to do it for you. The music industry isn't the way it used to be. You know, it, you have to really like be your own boss. So. Well, those are uh, some great names that you shared. Thanks for that. So Jenny, as you know, the purpose of this podcast is to inspire people to achieve greatness and enhance their overall personal well-being. So what is your definition of greatness? So my definition of greatness is to find your God-given calling, whatever that is, and use it to help the world. That to me is greatness. It's not, oh, I have the biggest car. I have the most money. It, that's not what I'm saying. It, it's actually, it could be something like, just given from God that is supposed to be what you're supposed to do, your mission for the world. To me, those are great people because they found what their mission is and they're going out and they're doing it. So that's, you know, even if they're not famous, it's just, you know, that's just great. I, I love that. A bunch of my guests that I've had on my show have uh, said something similar along the lines, making sure that whatever you are really good at, so your gift, making sure that you could find a way to transfer that skill into not just succeeding for you, but giving to others. So that's pretty aligned kind of with what you were saying. So Jenny, who is a future guest that you'd like to see on this show? Yeah, so I, I liked your story mentioned about, you know, Shania. I mean, she is someone I really look up to. What an amazing story she had from childhood to getting into music. Um, that person is, is a very strong person. And, and the marriage she went through and all these horrible things, I mean, and still to be as resilient as she is and beautiful like literally one of my top, like, I, I'm a super fan. I love her. So should I ask Wayne? <laughs> uh, that's my list. And uh, I'll let you know when that day comes. I'll, uh, I'll be sure to, to reach out to you. Absolutely. So Jenny, where could our listeners go to connect with you online? So you can go to JennyGraceMusic.com. Or if you're on Instagram, you can do Jenny Grace Official. And I'm working on getting a TikTok eventually. I got to get on the bandwagon. I know I'm late, but I'll be doing that too. So Jenny Grace official. Awesome. Great. So I'll be sure to include that in the podcast notes. So then all my listeners know where to go to listen to your music or follow your work. Uh, but Jenny, I want to take uh, the last moment here to really thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me and good luck to you in the future. I know you'll do great things. Thank you for listening to the Living Your Greatness podcast. If this show has added value, please subscribe, leave a rating, and make a review.